The Denver Broncos schedule for the 2021 NFL season is officially set. Will Denver have any primetime games? How do they open up the season? And what is their toughest stretch of the schedule? We break it down on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. From the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Senior NFL Analyst at Pro Football Network and Broncos Analyst for the Locked On NFL Network. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL. You can follow the podcast at Lockdown Broncos. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button on the YouTube channel, Lockdown Broncos. Also, on your favorite podcast provider, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and our good friends over there at Odyssey. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode of the show is brought to you by our good friends over there, rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts that your car will ever need, rockauto.com. I'll tell you about them a little bit later on as the show progresses. But welcome to Lockdown Broncos, ladies and gentlemen, the 2021 NFL schedule is officially set. The Denver Broncos, they know their opponents. They know the times. And things are always subject to change due to flexibility. But there are a lot of questions. There are some interesting stretches of the season that we have to break down here on today's episode of the show. So let's get into the schedule review here, folks. Diving into the preseason to open things up. As we know, three NFL preseason games on slate for this upcoming season. Something that was negotiated by the NFL in the NFLPA, in terms of the collective bargaining agreement, there was a talk about eliminating preseason games altogether, but with a 90-man roster and a variety of young players that you're bringing in, undrafted rookie free agents, and also some of your college players, you want to see how they can play in the National Football League. Preseason is necessary. Denver, they're going to have two road preseason games, one home preseason game. That's not going to come till week three of the preseason. But starting things off, the Denver Broncos, they'll be on the road in the preseason, traveling to take on the Minnesota Vikings. And apparently they're going to be holding joint training camp practices, which is interesting considering that we are still in a pandemic. Not quite sure how you factor in 90 players and 90 players plus all the coaches and personnel. But this makes sense with George Payton being the Broncos general manager, the former ties that bind there. He's got a great relationship with Rick Spielman, GM of the Minnesota Vikings. So this is something that's going to work out. Then they're going to play against each other either on August 13th or August 14th to open up the preseason schedule. And then they'll travel to Seattle to take on the Seattle Seahawks and Russell Wilson. Not quite sure how many starters or how long the starters will play in any of these matchups, but it's interesting to note there. And then they'll close out the preseason with a week three preseason finale on August 28th against the Los Angeles Rams at Empower Field at Mile High. But let's get into the official schedule release, folks. The first half of the season for the Denver Broncos is confirmed. Denver will travel on the road, week one, the Monday night football appearance to start the season streak is officially over. We've seen that for the last 29 years. It's not going to be the case here. Denver's not even going to have much of a national television presence this upcoming season. We can talk about that a little bit later on as the show progresses. But the New York Giants are going to be where they open up at MetLife Stadium. A lot of interesting ties there. Who's going to be the quarterback for the Broncos week one? It's going to be Drew Locke. It's going to be Terry Bridgewater. It's going to be somebody else. Some other storylines. Pat Shermer. He's going to be returning to New York, where he was formerly the head coach there. He was fired, and then he became the offense coordinator for the Denver Broncos. So some interesting ties that bind. Daniel Jones, he's got a variety of weapons this year at the wide receiver position. Evan Ingram, Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Toney, John Ross, Kyle Rudolph, and then Saquon Barkley's back. But the Broncos, they've revamped their defense up as well in that secondary to match up with the wide receiving talent that they have there. Kenny Galladay is also another player people have to keep their eye on in this match, I mean, Denver's going to have their hands full in the secondary, but they're well-equipped, in my opinion, on paper right now to be able to do that. And then Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, Mike Purcell, Shelby Harris, Draymond Jones maybe being the anticipated starter on that defensive line against Saquon Barkley. It's going to be a fun physical defensive matchup, folks, to start off the season. We'll see if the Broncos' offense can elevate, but then they'll go week two on the road at Jacksonville. They're going to take on rookie quarterback Trevor Lawrence, the first overall pick in this previous NFL draft. And Vic Fangio's got a really good track record against rookie quarterbacks. We'll see if he can make Trevor Lawrence's life a little bit miserable in his second week in the National Football League. And then Denver will return home for two consecutive home games. They will take on the New York Jets in week three. Zach Wilson, another rookie quarterback, comes to town. This looks like a very favorable schedule to start off the season for the Broncos if we look at those teams' records last year and the potential that Denver has on paper. We'll obviously dive into that a little bit more. But then week four, they're going to host Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. They're going to come to town. It's going to be an afternoon kickoff, and the Broncos are going to be very tested there. Derek Wolf, he's coming back to Denver 
for this matchup. So you know he's going to have a little bit of an extra chip on his shoulder. But then the Broncos, the stretch gets a little difficult for them afterwards as they travel to Pittsburgh in Week 5 at Heinz Field to take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Obviously, last year was a turning point for the Broncos in Week 2. They suffered two key injuries with Drew Locke and Cortland Sutton in that game in Week 2. Now they'll play the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 5. And then the first AFC West Divisional matchup of the season for the Broncos comes in Week 6. The Las Vegas Raiders come to town, 2.25 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff. And then the national televised game does happen for the Denver Broncos following that in Week 7. Thursday night football, the Broncos, they travel to Cleveland at the dog pound to take on Baker Mayfield. And this was a storyline I was looking at on yesterday's episode, Locked On Broncos, considering the fact that you want to play in Cleveland a little bit earlier rather than later on in December when it's cold and it's you know windy and it's blowing snow sideways at the stadium. So we'll keep an eye on this, but this is obviously going to be a tough stretch for the Broncos. And then they're going to come back on Halloween. They're going to be hosting the Washington football team. Defensive rookie of the year from last year, Chase Young, is coming to town. He's going to try to get after whoever's the Broncos quarterback. And the Broncos, they're going to be really tested by that defense. They were one of the top defenses in the NFL last season, and they got a little bit stronger this offseason. And then after that, in Week 9, the Denver Broncos, they will be on the road to take on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. And then the final game before their bye week, Week 10, the Broncos, they're going to come back to Empire Field of Mahai. They are going to host the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts. Who knows what the story is going to be like with this Eagles team, but they've added some weapons on the offensive side of the ball. They still have some talented players on the defensive side of the ball. It'll be interesting to see how the Broncos do in their first 10 weeks of the NFL season. That first half of the schedule, in my opinion, appears to be a little favorable, but there is a tough stretch there, and we're going to analyze the tough stretch for Denver and some of the storylines that may accompany this game right before the bye week. But Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. We're going to get into the second half of the NFL schedule for the Denver Broncos, and we're going to be diving into the toughest stretch of the schedule for the Broncos. You can make an argument. It's that week four through week 10 stretch, and then it could be even the second half of the season. It gets very tough playoff positioning on the line, divisional play. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, i got to tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's a good friends over there, rockauto.com. And if I ever need anything for my vehicle, if something goes wrong, or if I'm trying to make renovations to my vehicle, the only place that I trust to get the most reliable parts at an affordable price, that's rockauto.com, baby. And they are a family-owned business that's been serving auto parts customers online for over 20 years that's why I rock with rockauto.com. And you can go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. They have everything you could be looking for from engine control modules, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even an air refreshener if you need that for your vehicle. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, you get everything that you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your doorstep. And the catalog at rockauto.com is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. And you can quickly see all the parts available for your car or truck by looking at year, make, model, brands, specifications, and even the prices that you prefer. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low. And they're the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And write lock on Broncos in there. How did you hear about his box so that they know that we sent you? Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts that your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Getting into the second half of the schedule now for the Broncos, we got through week one. They have 10 weeks before the bye week. Week 11 is going to be the bye, but the second half of the schedule from weeks 12 all the way through 18, it's going to test the Broncos, I think, in, in their willpower. And, and not to mention, it's going to test their ability to maybe compete for a playoff spot because a lot of the final matchups down the second half of the season, they involve divisional play. And we know how important divisional play is. You win your divisional head-to-heads. You have the opportunities for tiebreaker scenarios, work your way up the charts. You got to take care of business in the early part of the season, though, before you have to get to the divisional play, right? Divisional play is great. You can make the playoffs if you win your division, but you want to put yourself in a position where you don't have to worry about having to win every single game. You can afford maybe to go one and one with each of your divisional opponents, but I think with where the Broncos have been, this is going to be a true test to Vic Fangio, to the players, and to the entire coaching staff at this point in time because they're going to open things up week 12 after the bye week at home against the Los Angeles Chargers, Justin Herbert. And the Broncos last year, they went one and one with them. They had an amazing comeback at home. But now the Chargers have loaded up Brandon Staley. He's going to be coming to town. He used to coach with Vic Fangio as an outside linebacker coach for the Denver Broncos. And he obviously was the first year very successful defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams. And now he's a first year head coach. There's going to be a lot of intriguing storylines we're going to follow amongst the AFC West. We'll talk about it with our AFC West counterparts 
in the Ultimate Division crossover coming here this summer here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. But after the Los Angeles Chargers game, the Broncos, they're on the road to Kansas City for an early game. It's going to be an 11 a.m. Mountain Time kickoff at Arrowhead Stadium. That's on December 5th. So it may or may not be snowing at this point in time in Kansas City. We know that Denver, every time that they've played Kansas City, the last couple of seasons, they've had one snow game at least. So we'll see where, where things are at. But it's amazing that the Broncos have only had one divisional game at this point in the first half of the season, and they're having the remainder of their divisional games in the second half from weeks 12 all the way through 18. That, to me, I think was interesting from a scheduling standpoint for maybe a playoff impact scenario. Then the Broncos will host two home games in a row. They'll host the Detroit Lions in week 14, and then they'll host the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Burrow is coming to town. Hopefully, Joe Burrow is still intact by the time that the Broncos and them play. But that's going to be on December 19th, week 15, and power field at mile high. And then the Broncos, they will close out the season with two road games and one remaining home game. And that's going to be Week 16, the Broncos on the road at the Las Vegas Raiders at Allegiant Stadium. That's going to be in 2.25 p.m. Mountain Time kickoff for the Broncos here and for the Raiders. Divisional play to end out the season is always interesting because this is going to be the gamut where all these teams are trying to stack wins. We talk about the importance of tiebreakers uh, to close out the season with three divisional games. That's going to be massive when we talk about the AFC playoff picture that may be last potential wildcard spot or one of the wildcard spots plus the division, you're going to have a gambit right here between these three teams. And then you're on the road week 17 at the Los Angeles Chargers SoFi Stadium, which appears to be another home for Denver. There's a great contingent of Broncos fans in that California area. We'll see how things go there. But tough stretch down the rest of the way for the Broncos. And this is the most interesting game. And I think a lot of this contingent upon uh, how Kansas City is doing, maybe how Denver's doing. Now, they're going to host Kansas City in the regular season finale week 18. This is on January 9th. And the thing that I'm looking at here with this matchup depends on where the Kansas City Chiefs are. If they're at the top of the division, as many people expect them to be this upcoming season, they may rest their starters for that week 18 matchup, which if Denver is in a position, let's say that they're tied for second place in the AFC West or they're trying to get a position for that one of those final playoff wild card spots, they have a favorable chance to maybe beat Kansas City if Kansas City rests their starters, and which I imagine they might if they have home field advantage taken care of and they have things locked up. But at this point, I think it's all speculation. Everyone expects Kansas City right now to win the AFC West, to dominate the division once again. But I want to throw caution to the wind here. I think that the Broncos, based on their schedule the first half of the season, we're going to see them tested from about week four all the way through week 10. I think that that tough division, you're going to play the AFC North. You're going to play some of the NFC East teams, and that's going to be tough. I, I know that the NFC East last year was a laughing stock across the National Football League because they were poor in terms of their record, but you factor in Dak Prescott being back, Jalen Hurts probably being the more solidified starter this year for the Philadelphia Eagles, the Washington football team, we have no idea what their quarterback situation will look like, but we do know that they have a damn good defense and they have some offensive weapons. They're going to be hard to stop, and so it'll be intriguing to see how Denver matches up with some of those players and those teams. Then, like I mentioned, Baltimore, you have Cleveland on the road. I mean, that is a difficult stretch. So if Denver can come out here against New York Giants, the Jaguars, and the New York Jets in the first three weeks, get some momentum and maybe get off to a hot start, it could give them momentum and confidence that they haven't had down the stretch and even through the first half of the season, then you have that bye week that comes at a critical juncture and you're just hoping at this point you don't have injuries that are decimating your depth and your personnel. And if so, you're going to have a lot of young guys playing, which Denver, the last couple of seasons, they've been accustomed to playing a lot of these young guys. But outside of that, I think that the Broncos have a favorable schedule. And we will look at the Vegas odds. Denver has one of the easiest schedules in the National Football League because a lot of the teams that they're playing, they finished either last place or they had bottom records in their divisions last season. So it's a favorable strength of schedule for the Broncos. However, I don't look at that, and I look at all the changes that these teams have made going into the offseason, going to the NFL draft, and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult, and Denver's going to have to find a way to grit some games out. But I tell you what, it's going to be a great test because the Broncos are going to be playing some really good teams, really good players, and if they can come out and sneak some wins against some potential contenders, it'll give them momentum through the rest of the way. But Broncos country, I'm eager to know what you believe is the toughest stretch of the schedule for the Broncos for the upcoming 2021-2022 NFL season. Let me know in the comment section down below on YouTube. Let me know on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL. But coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about the favorable matchups that Denver has 
on the schedule. Dive into them. Dive into some of the storylines and the time frame in which these teams play in the 2021 NFL season. But before we do that, folks, i got to tell you about the other sponsor of today's episode of the show. It's a good friends over there, BetOnline.ag and BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. You've got baseball season right now in full swing. You can track all the action at BetOnline. And you get all the latest news, odds, and info on all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and the UFC and MMA. So before the next pitch, head over to BetOnline on your laptop or your mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code locked on bet online your online sportsbook experts getting into the fourth quarter of today's episode lockdown broncos just a reminder folks you can get this podcast every single day in your favorite podcast provider apple podcast google podcast spotify and odyssey here on youtube the link is in the description below make sure you hit that follow button to get the audio version and also check us out here in video format every single day but getting to some thoughts on the easiest stretch of the broncos schedule taking a look at some of these matchups that appear more favorable Definitely the start of the season for Denver. Now, the last couple of years, I feel like Denver, they've opened up to a really tough slate of games. Last year was Tennessee, and then it was the Pittsburgh Steelers. Then it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That was a tough three-game stretch. So Denver this year, in my opinion, has a more favorable three-game start than they did last year on the road at the New York Giants. Now, if we look at how the Giants played last year, despite the fact of their record in the NFC East, they were still, in my opinion, one of the most underrated defenses In the National Football League last year, I talked about the weapons that they've added for Daniel Jones. He's got more solidarity around him right now than I think he has been in his young career in the National Football League. You have all the receiving threats from Sterling Shepard, from Kenny Galladay, John Ross, as we mentioned, and the red zone, Kyle Rudolph, Evan Ingram, who we know has given the Broncos fits in the past. And then Saquon Barkley, I mean, the run game can get going with him, and they just have a variety of different players that can step up, I feel like, this year. So it will be a tough test for the Broncos to open up on the road. I think having preseason games this year will help the organization, will help these players be more ready for the game action, what it's going to bring when they do step onto the field, and that's due to that three-game preseason slate, obviously, at Minnesota, at Seattle, and then hosting the Los Angeles Rams. But I want to focus on the Week 2 matchup against Jacksonville. This is intriguing from all angles. They've added talent Travis Etienne. You also have Trevor Lawrence, their first overall selection in this year's 2021 NFL Draft. He's really good. He's going to he's going to elevate that team in a, in a bright way, but is there going to be an adjustment period for Trevor Lawrence in the National Football League? I think that it is normal. It's going to be natural. He was prolific at Clemson, but in the NFL, it's different. Defensive guys are faster. Pass rushers are bigger, faster, stronger. And you have to have that clock in your head. You have to understand when to get the ball out. So for Trevor Lawrence, who does have some flaws in his game, despite the fact he was really great and had a lot of success at Clemson, I think that Vic Fangio is going to find a way to devise a game plan to make life difficult for him, maybe make him hold on to the ball a little bit longer, a step longer. If the Broncos' coverage can lock up and hold on, I think that Denver has a very favorable chance to go to Jacksonville and get a win. Denver could potentially start the season 2-0. and You know me on this podcast. I never talk about wins, losses, projected record. I don't think – I don't believe in that stuff. I believe in week to week. you got to let the process play out. But when we look at favorables and on paper hypotheticals, It does make sense. And then hosting Zach Wilson and the New York Jets. This is going to be an intriguing matchup. Robert Sala as a new head coach. Zach Wilson as a very prolific young football player. I'm going to be intrigued to see how he steps up in the first couple weeks of the season. So when he plays week one and week two, I'm going to be doing a lot of film review and leading up to week three about his week one and week two performances from when the Jets played. What did he do well? What did he do wrong? How can Denver capitalize? We're going to have some breakdowns here in the Lockdown Broncos podcast and also in our film review. You can check that out as well. We're going to have you covered with that. But I think that for Zach Wilson, his arm talent is un- you know it's unspeakable. Somebody had thrown something out on Twitter that Zach Wilson is just Drew Locke who was not able to listen to hip-hop music as a kid growing up. I saw that on Twitter during the NFL draft. I about lost it, but you can make the comparison between these two quarterbacks, Drew Locke and uh, Zach Wilson. We talk about hair. We talk about arm talent, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see who the quarterback is for the Broncos to start the season. Will it be the same guy in week two or week three? I mean, it can change. We have no idea what storylines are going to impact this team. And I think for the first time in a long time, I think Broncos fans can hold their hands and pray and hope and, and think that this team 
can overcome injuries and maybe not suffer some major injuries at the early part of the season or even at all in 2021 that they've had the last couple of years. It would be amazing to get another full season of Bradley Chubb, of Von Miller, and being able to get everybody in sync and, and keep guys healthy because when the Broncos' defense is healthy, I think they have the potential to be a top defense in the National Football League if we're looking at paper projections. And then you have to factor in the offensive side of the ball. For a young offense, can they keep guys consistent? The offensive line right now, I think, for the most part, outside of right tackle is relatively set. Lloyd Cushenberry is going to be entering his second year. A lot of high expectations for him. Can he take the next step? Can he get stronger this offseason? Graham Glasgow, can he stay healthy? Dalton Reisner is expected to have a big year at the left guard position. And Garrett Bowles coming off of a an all-pro season for him in a Pro Bowl year and a big, massive contract. He's looking to maintain that. But right tackle right now is the big question for the team. And can Denver be solidified enough with the return of Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick? You have Melvin Gordon and the addition of Javante Williams and Mike Boone, the running back rotation. We have no idea how that's going to play out right now. And not to mention the quarterback position is a big question. But Broncos country, I'm eager to hear your thoughts on what you believe may be the best stretch for the Broncos to take advantage of the season. I do think that Denver, if they can have that bye week after week 10 coming against the Philadelphia Eagles, coming into that game against the Los Angeles Chargers in week 12, if Denver can get a win against the Chargers and even Kansas City, which you're going on the road at Arrowhead, it's going to be tough. But if Denver can win two of those two games right there off the bye week, I tell you what, this team will have a lot of momentum. There are many different trajectories in which this team could go. But more importantly, Broncos country, you know me. I'm not getting into schedule predictions in terms of win-loss record, but I will let you do that. So let me know in the comment section down below here on YouTube or on Twitter, at Cody Rourke and Avail, what you believe the Denver Broncos record for the 2021-2022 NFL season will be. And in the meantime, after this podcast, be sure to check out the Locked On Today podcast hosted by Peter Bukowski. Locked On Today brings you the biggest stories all around every realm of sports, MLB, NBA, college, NFL, NHL. And Peter Bukowski brings in the local experts and they give their insight on Locked On Today. You can find that podcast in your favorite podcast provider. But with that said, Broncos country, I'm Cody Rourke, host of Locked On Broncos. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.